This is episode three of the Unfake It Till You Make It podcast. I'm your host, Tony Suriano. Guys, get ready for a special interview that was recorded in an airplane ride way up in the sky from New York City to Los Angeles. This podcast will talk you through the ups and downs in the entertainment industry. Each and every one of you has a talent, but it's a tough business. People gonna tell you, get a real job. By introducing you to sustainable, moldable methods in a crazy, cutthroat world. Let us harness our willpower and take real action. Don't let it get you down. Join me, brothers and sisters, on a journey through trials and tribulations. Unfake it till you make it. Hello out there, somewhere. Welcome. Today's episode is really unique and it wouldn't have happened without taking a big chance on my part. Let me fill you in. I recently was invited to the rap party for a Martin Scorsese film called The Irishman in New York City. I had a small one day acting part in the film back in September 2017 and it was the best time of my film life. Seriously, Scorsese is one of my favorite directors so it was a privilege to die for. If you would like to see some pictures, check out my Instagram or Twitter at Let's Unfake It. Okay, I'm located in Los Angeles, so I wasn't sure if I could make it out to New York just for a rap party. And mainly, I wasn't sure if I should spend the New York money it would take to do it all. After all, when you're in between film gigs and working hard to prepare a passion project like this podcast, you got to be vigilant with your money savings. I literally almost decided not to go, but then I realized I will be on my deathbed one day, regretting that one day that I didn't go. And then I said, wait a minute, what if I could ask some of the greatest filmmakers out there to be on this podcast? I was only on set for one day and didn't get a chance to really get friendly with anyone. No one would probably remember me, but it's worth a shot. So luckily, it was my birthday, and my amazing younger sister and her boyfriend gifted me airfare with their travel points, and boom, I went to New York City. Thank you so much, guys. It was the best birthday so far, and guess what? Everything went beyond belief. I brought a deck of playing cards and put on my best dress shoes. They were actually boots. I'm a magician, so I performed magic randomly at the rap party to some groups of people, made some friends, and ended up getting a bunch of key crew members to agree to be on this podcast, including one of the executive producers of The Irishman. I was on cloud nine, and still am, and am super excited to share all the wisdom to come with you guys in the near future episodes. Okay, the takeaway... I started out a bit discouraged, wanting to eh, just let it pass by. Maybe there'll be another rap party. But like Woody Allen said, 80% of success is showing up. And this really showed me the power of showing up. I took the chance with absolutely no guarantees. I envisioned making people laugh and having a good time no matter what. Even if I got no, no one to agree to be on the podcast, that was what I said to myself. Just have a good time and do some good magic. And I was really nervous to do so, but after I made friends with some people, I just stepped forward, not thinking about rejection, just was in the moment and asked those lovely folks to be interviewed. And I got a bunch of great people to agree. Now, some people told me I shouldn't go. I should save money, focus on getting bigger film jobs here in L.A. And I know they were trying to protect me, but I I had this bigger idea that was a pretty far reach, but I truly believed in it. Developing this podcast, to me, is bigger than any bigger film job because I know it can help me and those who listen to get ready for the biggest gig of all, becoming aware and ready to seize the day every day with the outlook of the entertainment world. Even when you feel like shit, just to 
seize the day, take the chance, do what you feel in the moment. As long as you're not hurting anyone, you're doing fine. (laughs) So be careful who you listen to. Go with your gut and I promise you, you will grow. I'm proof. To me, I've already grown. I could die today and I feel good because I accomplished some things that were just ideas and the way I got there was just doing and showing up. Then the final thing happened from the chain of events, the airplane ride. In today's episode, I interview a new friend of mine I met on an airplane ride from New York when I left to California. She is a film director and producer as well as a world traveler from Hong Kong. Her recent documentary is called $30 to Antarctica, and it has done quite well in the film festival circuits, won multiple awards, earning her recognition as a documentary filmmaker. Not only did this turn out to be a fun airplane ride and podcast episode, but it also turned out to be the beginning of a beautiful friendship. She is a fantastic graphic designer, and a few weeks later, after meeting, we met up again, and together we came up with the website and icon art you'll see on our Instagram or unfakeittillyoumakeit.com. The lemon head you'll see was very much inspired by a photo my good friend Daniel Aceves took of me screaming in the rain with no shirt. Uh, Don't ask me why. I was just screaming in the rain and we were shooting. He photoshopped my head into a screaming lemon and my eyes and mouth are really enlarged. It's pretty interesting. Uh, And this had actual meaning to me. Sometimes on our path, we turn into lemons also known as a crappy running car, or in this case, a human. And when that happens, we need to scream our way out and get back on that path that we know deep down we need to be on. So she took the picture he took of me in which he photoshopped into a lemon, and then she put her graphic spin on it and created this cool cartoon character, and she did a wonderful job. And I'm telling you this because I find it fascinating that a picture 10 years ago finally through meeting someone on an airplane came to fruition and is now going to be the icon that represents this podcast okay back to the show and my guest we discuss how traveling the world can inspire filmmaking and vice versa along with how listening and learning go hand in hand I am really excited to present to you this completely impromptu episode. Literally a few hours after getting to know each other on the airplane, we just decided let's take out the audio gear. I didn't even use it in New York. I brought it just in case. So this is perfect. And we recorded this interview with only 45 minutes until landing. So please pardon the airplane sound quality and enjoy my conversation with Miss Joey Chu. Well, hello there. Are you recording already? <laughs> yeah. Okay, hello. Okay. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so, <laughs> I can't wait. So we are, we, we are on a plane. I'm here with Joey, or Joey. 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 That's how you say it. She is from Hong Kong, China. And we decided to just have a discussion on the plane here. We're... We met four hours ago on this plane from New York, and we're heading to California. And we both had something in common. We both went to New York for a film event. Hers was one of the premieres, or is that what you call it? What was it? I mean, it was a screening at a, at a film festival. Yes. Mine was, I was going to a rap party for the movie The Irishman. It's going to be an amazing Scorsese movie coming out in November of this coming year, I hope. We all Promo. Hope. Yeah. So, I watched her documentary. It was a beautiful 18-minute documentary. Just watched it. We got inspired, and uh, I figured, why not talk a little bit about her triumphs and tribulations? Is that the saying? <laughs> so, can you, Joey? Joey? Just call me Joey. Damn it. Okay. Can you please let the listeners know 
um, a little bit about your bio and yourself, just like a quick rundown. Just who I am. Yeah, who you are, what you love, what you do. Um, I'm Joey. I was born and raised in Hong Kong. Uh, when I was 16 years old, I studied abroad in, in Vancouver, Canada for two years in a school over like five, th- over students from 50 different countries. We had maybe four Canadians. So because of that, I got a really interesting perspective on politics and surroundings and is- issues around the world and conflicts, basically. And um, on my last year being in Canada, we went on a trip to Kenya. Mm, and there great. we... Huh? Africa. Kenya? Yeah, Africa? Kenya, Africa, great. yes. It's hard to hear on the plane, guys, so if I repeat questions or she does, that's that's what happens. Okay. <laughs> so, we went there and um, I met these brothers. The older one is called Samuel, the younger one is called Jack. And um, Jack and... It's so weird to talk about this. I just need to like... Well, it's it's definitely sound sounds interesting. So, take so, your time if you need a moment. Samuel was my age, and um, Jack was a year younger. And Samuel was already passed to go to college, and he had scholarship and everything. A year later, I contacted him again, and we talked. And I asked him how how are things going, and he told me that Jack didn't manage to get the scholarship. And I asked him, so what are you gonna do? And apparently, they went on YouTube. And learned how to sew, bought a sewing machine, and made their own clothes and decided to sell them. So then we could pay for his tuition. Wow. So that was the moment when I was, when I realized that I want to tell human experience stories. Like, I've always been into filmmaking, but I never decided on what part of filmmaking I want to be in. So a lot of these kind of experiences and listening to people's stories make me realize that I'm much more interested in human experiences and different cultures and everything so when I graduated high school I had a gap year where I traveled to Cambodia where I also did the same thing I was in the school and I was there for a whole month and making films for the school and like helping them fundraise and then I also went to South Africa that same year because my brother was competing in the World Transplant Games. Damn, what, what kind of games? That is a, an Olympic for transplant patients. So with any patient who had transplant surgeries. So when he was nine, he got a liver transplant. Ah, uh, yeah, that was in the documentary. Yes. Okay. So, so he can participate in these kind of events and they happen every two years. And um, so I was there and I was filming for the Hong Kong team. And it's basically an event to celebrate second chances like life at life because everyone there has had a transplant and if they didn't have it they would have been gone so and then after that i went to savannah college of art and design and went to school film film school for four years that's savannah georgia in america yes wonderful so that was the first place i've been in america savannah georgia that's very different yeah that's very different and And you're well traveled before you entered that's very cool yeah and so every so at school I did a lot of filmmaking and I know I learned a lot about like being on set and that kind of stuff but every summer I always managed to travel or like have people pay for my travels to shoot more stuff for different nonprofits. so I've been to like Myanmar to do a short for um, an orphanage and I went to Nepal multiple times to cover a bunch of different stories especially before and after the earthquake so I raised like $15,000 and built a bunch of houses there wow that's amazing you know i just met a gentleman at a magical bar i was doing magic for him okay and i'm a magician for those of you that don't know and he's a really cool guy has a couple friends and they go to nepal and he talked about after the earthquake every every year for three years they've been going and building so i got his information recently and I want to go to the next time they go. It would be. You should go. It sounds cool that Nepal's you've gone beautiful. already. Wow. Yeah, it's one of the most beautiful countries I've Must ever been. Must have been really rewarding to yeah. help with everything. And like I, I've been involved with that organization like for a, basically a year before I, the earthquake happened. So when it happened, I felt like I needed to do something about it. Yeah, exactly. So 
Yeah, yeah we built we built a few we built a lot of um, temporary shelters like in the remote areas so we had to like take a bus to this stop in this other city and then we had to sit on the back of a truck for five hours and then trek for another three hours to get to that mountain range it was crazy I have no words for that that's <laughs> it was fun though I really miss it so when was the last time you were there 2000 Six, no, 2015, oh, summer. Okay. Wow, that's a long time ago. Very good. So I'm going to jump to this sure. question. Uh, I have so many questions now. Well, wait, so wait, yeah, what was the well, question, though? The question was, yeah, <laughs> tell, me, tell me a little bit about yourself. No, I told you <laughs> way too much. No, that's very okay, cool. I, I had no idea. I didn't know. I, all I knew is that you went to Nepal for six months. That was it. Yeah, I mean, so I kind of went in between, like, in, interval, in intervals. So, like I said... The first time I went for like a month and a half, and then like I went for a month, and then you know, wow, something like that. You probably learned a lot on the travels. I have some questions about that a little later. Okay. But I wanted to hop out of the entertainment industry. Uh, but basically, first and foremost, before I do, you would say you are a director. I'm a director for producer. Okay, and you've mainly done I, short films and, and uh, features so far. Is that what your I've goals? Mostly done shorts and. My, my passion will always be documentary, but I'm always open to all kinds of filmmaking. Great. Yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, so out of the entertainment industry, what do you love to do that has nothing to do with the entertainment industry? I love to write a lot. Okay, well, that, kind of, that could have something to do with the entertainment yeah, industry. But what kind know, of writing? It, journaling? What? Yeah, journaling or like poetry, but... Those don't need to be anywhere, you know what I mean? So okay. it's like more of a personal thing. Great. So what kind of poetry, do you have a category or how did you start doing that? It was a class at school, actually. I went to, did a poetry class and fell in love. Hmm. Which, how early or how young were you when you started It was that? actually pretty recent. I would say like the past three years huh. got into it. But um, if you're talking about something completely non-art... No, that no, it doesn't have to be. So... When I you, take photos and I do that not for not for like entertainment. You are either, definitely you know? a filmmaker. <laughs> sure. <laughs> That's great. No, yeah, but I, I also really <laughs> like to hang out with my dog. What's your dog's name? Kobe. Kobe? Yeah. Like Kobe O'Brien? No, Kobe Bryant? Kobe, like, he's short, short for Cobalt because he's an Aussie. Ooh. So he had blue eyes. Oh, I So Cobalt, the color, you know? I see. But he's great. Do you journal every day or something? No, or what just you... like whenever I feel like it. Okay. Yeah. Great. That take you out of things? Like out of your day to day, or why like, do you do it? You know, we always, we're always, we're all, like time is always passing, and then the more you think back to your past, the more you're forgetting. So it's better to just have something written down so you can always look back at what you've been through. You know, that's good. And there are a lot of things like I feel like you don't, like we grow to understand a lot of times. It's like so that's why it's interesting to look back and figure it out. Kind of. Very true. When you write things down, you can you're recording so you can grow or yeah. you can just reflect, yeah. which is I think important. Some and people, obviously, I love traveling. So yeah, yeah. When you're at a new place and you're writing a journal, yeah. you've never been and you're just exploring the land. It's, yeah. it's a great no, I, place to put the thoughts. Yeah. What I love about traveling is that it makes you so uncomfortable, so it forces you to do things, and that's so great. Yeah. Out of the comfort zone. Yeah. So you like zoom out of your own life. Yeah, regular. like you're much more outgoing and you're like, you want to get to know people a lot more and yeah. you don't have the comfort of just going home and like pretending like the world doesn't exist, you know? Very true. I always, whenever I'm somewhere that I don't know, <laughs> I feel the same way and I like, I like it because it, it's like real alone time. Yeah, and it's all and, about you. And then you realize, oh, like, oh, I want, I have this alone time, but I'm, I can't unalone myself because I don't know anyone here exactly. so let me unalone myself with the yeah with the people that exactly. are around me with it different forces cultures. you to do things yeah and it's so amazing love it and you make new friends you would never meet yeah anywhere. otherwise yeah you know or even if they were like on the street in LA you won't even like go and be hey definitely don't let don't let me get started with LA non eye contact oh yeah they're just like they do not yep. yeah I don't like I try to break their bubble I like hop in front of them and I, I try to look away and then I try to see if they'll take a second chance and I do something funny and then if I get a smile, then they say hello. I usually smile at people. That's or say good. hello. Well, that's, you're not from LA. You yeah, know? sure. I'm but, not from LA. You are the, though. I'm from LA, but actually the real, now I'm getting into it. Okay. <laughs> the, the, real deal, <laughs> the real deal with LA culture 
the native LA people are more likely to friend, be friendly and say hello to you. But there's not that many natives left, apparently. I mean, there are, but mainly LA is a smorgasbord of people from all around the states or the world. All the outcasts or the weirdos or the people that me? not you, not you. Yeah, but no, let's just he say means me. <laughs> mainly is from the <laughs> states, and I, I always make that joke that we 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 get everyone in LA is all like the people no, no one wants in their own states you know they send them to LA but really they send themselves it's not that funny but how I said it you know. sure <laughs> okay I think LA is pretty cool guys yeah yeah LA is no LA is a beautiful place I love it yep anyway um, you live in LA now yeah how long six months that's it new, yes oh okay great very good very cool okay here we go okay I have some some thoughts about many things. Uh, can you tell us about your 18-minute documentary called Thirty Dollars to Antarctica? Um, Thirty Dollars to Antarctica follows a doctor called Kafun Chow. It's about her story growing up as an impoverished child who wasn't allowed an education because she was a woman, but she strived through and became a doctor anyway. And it's about her dream to go to Antarctica. Wow, that was, no, that was well put. Good, 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 good. I just, I just watched it, like I mentioned, and you know I did. Cause, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Because you put it on my laptop. Yeah, that's because we've been talking for so long. I felt like you should. <laughs> I'm glad we did before this interview. I, literally, I definitely had my emotions stir up, and I related to it because I'm a past person. I won't mention her name, but she went through a lot of struggles where trying to fight to uh, be loved more than the siblings by an elderly figure, and it, and it was really touching to me, um, and I like that I saw the woman in this documentary, like how much she fought from that. Like that could have been the fuel that made her this wonderful doctor and wonderful mother, I'm sure. Uh, so they're in some festivals. How many festivals have they been in? And did you receive some awards? Is that what I heard? Yes. How'd you know that? I'm a magician. I can read some minds Whatever. sometimes. Um, I, I don't know how many it's been in, but I want to say 10. Wow. But some of them were not like screening festivals. So like I got into like finalist round or something like that. But um, I won best woman filmmaker and best director in one of them. And I also won, it won like third place jury prize at a Anchorage International Film Festival in Alaska. And I just screened it in New York and the next it's going to Phoenix, Arizona. Really? Yeah. Congratulations. Thanks. That's a big feat. I mean, festivals are, they mean so much in the filmmaker world. And this yeah. is a, I would say this is an indie film. Right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, but it was shot really well. Thanks. Okay, I'm a stickler for framing and and just all the composition as a director of photography as well. Um, and I really liked, I liked it. I mean, coloring was great. Thank you. And depth yeah, of field was right. Crew. It wasn't too much out of focus. It was like, everything was really good. I had a really great crew. Very Even cool. though it was like a very, very tiny crew. It was great. Excellent. So you went to Antarctica. Yes. Where else did you go? You filmed this in Hong Kong. Yes. And that's your own hometown. Mm -hmm. When you went to Antarctica, how was it and what did you learn and how crazy was it? How cold was it? It wasn't that cold, actually. It was the most interesting because I went in the summer. Oh, so the most interesting to go, thing sure. to me was the fact that it never, the sun never set. So the, all day it was just bright. And then it would kind of go gray for a little bit and then it would go back bright again. So that was the most interesting part. And also another thing that's so new or not new like but weird is the silence in Antarctica because the snow sucks up all the sound so when you're like in the middle of the ocean just floating like on a how do you call those boats like the rubber boats the boats yeah the rubber boats oh uh, when you're floating in the middle of the ocean on the rubber boats <laughs> on the rubber boats um, if you just stay quiet and like listen it's almost dead silence that must be amazing. Did you, you just do see, some... like, the water going and, like, moving, but you don't hear a thing. 
did you do this uh, a slow motion shot of her with her hands out and then the water was going in slow? Yes, but that is actually in Hong Kong. That was in Hong Kong. Yeah, okay. but I used the ocean a lot in my film to like allude. To yeah, it, so. definitely. But I, I wasn't sure. It almost looked like maybe it wasn't in slow motion. I like that. It made oh, me it feel good. Oh, it is in slow motion. It, I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah, it looked like it. But then at the same time, I was thinking, perhaps it isn't. Anyway, I'm, I think I'm, it is. That was a good choice. I mean, it looks, you think it is? I think you think you're the one that shot all that beautiful stuff. <laughs> it's interesting that that's the shot that you remember. Well, I remember a lot of the water shots. They're oh, beautiful. Cool, cool, cool. So Antarctica, what was the, um, what was the be- like most interesting thing you learned about Antarctica? Just itself, or the people, or, or some culture thing? The people. No one lives there. Well, the people that were, I don't know, the whole. Okay, people that's do funny. live there. People do live there. Scientists, but like, deep yeah, scientists. scientists. Did you like, meet any like native-ish? Met, you know what I mean? I met this guy who actually spent a winter in Alaska. No, not Alaska. Sorry, Antarctica. Which means like the whole entire winter was only like no day with no daylight at all so they had to, they were talking about how they had to like entertain themselves because people get depressed because you never see the you never see the sun yeah for six months that's insane so it's very just intense darkness and they were doing experiments and everything so that they would have like um musicals and theater like home theater like fun stuff watching did movies. you meet this person yeah and h- how did he appear he was actually on the cruise that we were on like he what? is like one of the staffs was he eccentric no he was just a regular scientist guy huh. yeah wow. also one day it was the sun was out it was so beautiful in antarctica and we saw so many whales it was it was breathtaking that sounds I miss great it. Yeah. Yeah, I would love to go. You That's go. so. Why did the woman want to go so bad to Antarctica? In I the, think in it your... was just it was always her dream. Be, but I think, which is which is why I try to do in my film. I think a big part of it was because she has always been faced with challenge and she's always overcome them. Hmm. So I think Antarctica was always like a good allusion to her life, which is why I use that as a symbol throughout the film. Because, like, her in Antarctica is basically her whole life, you know? Like, yeah. her going through all that... Alone, kind of. Obstacles. In and, a way. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah, that's very cool. Um, can I mention that it's your mother? Or are you, like, yeah, you can. Oh, okay, cool. So, your mother was actually the woman with all those struggles that became the doctor... Yes. ...and went to Antarctica. Yes. That's really beautiful. How was that? Was that a great experience with your mom? Yeah, it was... It was... It was the, how, how do you say it? Um, it was eye-opening, I guess. Like, I have never seen that side of her like that. Like, when she was reading a diary, like that part, like, she's never opened up to me about that. Wow. So that was the first time that happened. Big, like, step in your relationship with her, which yeah, is important. Yeah, so when we were recording that part and my mom was crying and reading the diary, I was crying and, reading, and listening to her. And my DP had no idea what's happening because he didn't speak English. He didn't speak Cantonese. Yeah. So he was like so confused, but it was good because he was focused on what he's trying to do. So it was great. <laughs> but like afterwards, we I was still crying and like trying to collect my breath. And then we were in the room, and he was like, "What happened in there?" Yeah, <laughs> it that was, was pretty funny. But it really it read that that was the first time she opened up. I mean, yeah. it's very. Very and I've always emotional. known she wrote, and I know, and that was like her writing when she was fifteen, and it was so poetic. And I, to me, it was interesting to hear someone talk about their struggle when they're struggling, versus them talking about it afterwards, like way afterwards. You know what I mean? Yeah. So during, it really puts you in the shoes of her at the time, versus like her talking about it. Oh, when I was a kid, this happened. Blah blah. You know. Goes to showing, uh, writing your life down periodically, or daily, or quarterly, whatever, yearly, it really can aid you exactly. to get to where you want to go. Exactly. And then you look back on it later and you see where you came from yeah. and you could be more, even more grateful to where you're at. Yeah. Wow. How has traveling strengthened your film career? Oh my God, so much. I don't even know. I, I've never like fully recognize how much of an impact it has had on me but I think it gave me a much more of a worldly views on the world and how 
there are much more bigger problems in the world that needs to be talked about and needs to be needs to be shed light on and um, it makes me care a lot less about petty things that's a great that that alone is worth traveling I think everyone in their life should set out times to travel yeah and like be alone too because it really make you really find yourself when you do that and that's what I did I think in all these years <laughs> so as far as petty things in the film industry how is that transferred let's say you're making some kind of film and some petty stuff happens how do you think from traveling you've been able to like calm yourself if if you're in a pickle or whatever absolutely yeah yeah I've, I just I think I learned to see people as the way they are a lot because I, th- I realized that everybody came from a place and everybody has the reason to be the way they are so it makes it okay for them to make mistakes or makes them okay to be the way they are like even if it's a bad thing I love and if, that and if as long as you can look past that everybody is the process you know and that's okay that's so good <laughs> no really it's funny that is something I've definitely been working on for the last years just like you sometimes we feel I want that person to just do this and be like that because then it'll work out for me yeah exactly like, why don't you just find another person that has some of those attributes and then you guys work together or something and then the other person that doesn't have that they have other attributes, attributes. Yeah. I don't know why I said attributes but yeah <laughs> attributes sounds better yeah and yeah, you can't can't change and you fix can, them, Yeah, really. you can, like, try to... Like, you can be, like, encouraging and trying to bring out another part of them that they didn't know they have or something like that, you know? If but, they're open to that, yeah. Yeah, exactly, but, like, you can't... I feel like when you make peace with how people are in real life, like, how they are as a person, then when they make, make mistakes or when they do certain things, it makes it a lot easier for you to stomach, like, especially when you're working together. I completely agree. Yeah, and that makes it a lot... It makes it a lot more of a pleasurable environment for both of you, you know? Yeah, and that's a practice for sure. For sure. To not only... Like, right now, us talking about it is going to make us even more aware. That's yeah. what I think. Yeah. So the next time it happens, we're going to remember this crazy exactly. plane trip. Yeah. And then it'll kick in more, and then it's just going to spiral upward. Yeah. So I love that. Yeah, but that also, like, really helps when I when it comes to making documentaries because you can't judge why people do what they do you know then you want to be able to give them the platform to say their perspective on things so yeah and you piece it together piece the truth together exactly the that's way very cool they give the story justice very cool yeah I have a long awaited documentary I want to let's say complete because I've filmed a part of it it was a small part but I definitely want to get going on that let's work before together. 2020 yeah Seriously. you would be a great person and i I can't wait to talk to you about it. Okay, let's talk to let's, let's talk, talk about we'll, it after. Yeah, after this. But I have some interesting stuff filmed already, cool. and it's very underground stuff. Yeah, let's but, tell everybody here about it. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, See move. See California. What? Yeah, California. <laughs> We're looking outside the window, and we see the California... What are those? <laughs> mountains. Those are mountains? I don't know, probably. How do you say mountains in Cantonese? San. Huh? San. San. Yep. You know what? Saan in Filipino means where. And it's very close to San. Saan. San. Sure. It also I mean, sounds like sand. <laughs> yeah. Like in English. And it looks like sand over there, mountains. So yeah. San. It's like sand dunes. How do I say cool in Cantonese? Like Cool? Yeah. Like oh, cool. I don't know. What about like like something similar? We just say cool. You do? Yeah, and in, in, in Cantonese, or at least in, in Hong Kong, we use a lot of English in our Cantonese I noticed language. On the pr- new, uh, so we call, we call it Chinglish. <laughs> really? Yeah. Chinglish? Yeah, yeah. Chinglish. That's yeah. funny. In in the Philippines, it's Taglish. That's, yeah. That's but wow, it, I didn't it, know that. I feel like in the Philippines, English is much more in Great Yeah, too. more like, prevalent. They use a lot of English. Yeah. Huh. Very interesting. I saw on the broadcast, the Chinese broadcast, uh, in your doc... They said oh. bye bye. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So cute. Yeah, we do that. Everybody finds that funny. Yeah. It's great. But like, that's actually how we say bye. Bye bye. Here's a great one for you. Okay. Who are your mentors in your life? Somebody else have asked me that before, like pretty recently too, and I feel like I kind of struggle to find an answer. But I feel like 
because I don't feel like I have a distinct one, you know what okay. I mean? Okay, yeah. But my mom, probably. Hey, that's a good one to have someone like her. Yeah. She's my mentor. I, I just... That she's one of them right now. Because yeah, but that's like a big in a struggle. way, but it's not in a way where she's like telling me what to do. Yeah. It's not like I, I I go to her and ask her how I solve a problem. It's you, not. It's never okay. been like that. I've so never been. It? I like almost never talked to her. I, I probably should talk to her a lot more, but only one, like I know I, we just have different time zones, so it's hard to. Yeah. And I'm traveling so much, and she's traveling so much. She just went to Belgium. She's crazy. Anyway, um, <laughs> so you kind of look inside her through what you know no, I th- sometimes through what I know and also like her experience you know like or like the way certain things that she would say growing up or how she would figure out a situation when I'm in the same room you know like and I learned from that That's or great. how she would tell me like who cares like I love when she does that she's like why do you care about what other people think? Or like, why do you care about this? Like, it's so stupid. Don't care about it. And I'm like, okay, I don't care now. And now I really don't care about a lot of things. That's great. And that's so great. Yeah, I love that. You just asked yourself that question, right? Yeah. Like, why does it really matter? I know. In four <laughs> months, is that going to matter? Exactly. In yeah, one year, yeah. in hundred years? Yeah, and my mom would be like, like, she taught me to be really hardworking. Yeah? Yeah, I mean... She looks like she was a hard worker. Yeah, she insane. definitely was. And she was with like, a passion. So that's the yeah. cool part. You can't just be a hard worker. You gotta be a hard worker with passion. Yeah. And, push. and she like like she didn't work in a hospital that's like closer to my house because she felt like the hospital that she works at is like a little far further and it's like on another part of Hong Kong. And the people there are the people that usually cannot afford as much good health care than people that live in my area so does she like would drive out of her way like 30 minutes just to be working at a hospital and it's like it's fantastic you know you just learn from what she does but she's never been the person that like sits me down and lectures me and that is a hard person to, to be a non-lecturer yeah. yeah i used to and sometimes still get into the like lecture mode when i i mean it really comes from me wanting them to know something good because like maybe it could help them but yeah if they're not sitting, signing up for your lecture, <laughs> no, don't but, get I mean, it. No, but I mean, of course, know? like, there are moments when that happens. But it's not, never, like, you have to listen to this. Like, I'm, I'm going to blab on and on and on about life. It's usually just, like, one single sentence or, like... <laughs> That's cool. You know. Hey, oh, can you give us a Chinese proverb that you that you hold close to your heart? You, you must have one. Whew. Um, in, in Cantonese first, please. It can come to you. You can come back to it later if you want. If it comes to you. Sure. Let's come back to it later. Okay. Yeah, me too. Woo. Yeah, our ears We're are popping. We're landing soon. My ears popping. Woo, I love it. Although, sometimes, I have you ever had the thing that goes inside your brain and it's like a piercing, it feels like your vein's going to pop out of your I've head? I've never had that. I've oh, never I, had that since I was four. That happened to me once. Oh, I used to have it to me all the time. Not anymore for a while. Good. So, let's hope on this. Okay. What are your favorite docs? And if the listeners, docs, yeah, like, docu- like documentaries. Okay, got it. If if the listeners wanted to watch just one or two docs, um, maybe people that are really interested in. <laughs> there's a guy collecting trash here, and and I was trying to pretend I'm not like recording this podcast. Those on the guys plane. next to us were staring at us earlier too. And, yeah, and they want us to close the trays, but I'm just waiting till they physically force do it. you to. Got it. <laughs> Okay, so if there was listeners out there that want to get into documentary filmmaking or anyone that should see a couple great documentaries, what would you recommend? One of my one of the best documentaries that I've seen that really pushed me to be a to be a documentary filmmaker was called Wasteland. I've heard of it. Have you seen haven't, it? I haven't seen it yet. It's on my list. The documentary is about people who collect trash at a landfill in Brazil, Rio, and about their lives. And how this artist came in to help them by taking photos with the trash that they make. Like they would, con- they would, how do you say it? They would um, construct the photos with the trash into like famous paintings and photos. And he would sell those. And then once he sold those, like he gave the profit back to the community. That's it was, admirable. It was really, really good. And I remember thinking that um, that was the kind of documentaries that I want to make. Yeah. Yeah, like things. Like I will impact. watch that for sure. That yeah, sounds... and um, another one that I really like is Cutie and a Boxer. 
Cutie and a Boxer? Cutie and a Boxer, yeah. Oh. It was nominated for Oscar like, in 2013, I think. Hmm. But um, it was really good, in my opinion, because it didn't really explore... Okay, no, it's about two New York artists, Japanese artists, that struggled a lot throughout their years, and they're now both old, and they have each other's company, but um, the, the guy, the husband has always been like the one that's leading them, and now the wife is finally making her own art and being recognized by her husband, and I thought that was so beautiful. Wow. And a lot of, like, the, what I like about the documentary the most is that it really explores their relationship more than anything. So it really makes you think about how people are, exactly, like what I was telling you earlier, like how people are and how it makes it okay. Because if you understand, if you can make peace with it, you can you can coexist and be okay. Yeah, and learn from it. What you want to be or don't want to be. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? Very good. <laughs> so I, those are my favorite too, I think, right great. now at least. Yeah. They've always been. In one word. Oh, no. What are you constantly working on improving about yourself that you could find to be the most beneficial to yourself and those around you? Could be patience, anger, what, you know, whatever it is. I, I know you're really patience, angry. She's I'm really been angry it. before this. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I've been so angry. Um, you can take your time. Patience, probably, to be honest. Even though I think I am already, like, especially with people. Actually, let me rethink this whole thing. <laughs> Patience is a great thing to work on all the time. Yes, it's true. Every situation I'm in, I try to remember, I need better patience. Yeah. But, like, you know, I grew up in Hong Kong, so people there are very efficient. Which means that when people aren't here, I get kind of upset. But I try not to. <laughs> you know. It's like, why is this taking so long? I wanted to ask, where can our listeners find you? Find your film, your Twitter, whatever you have, your Instagram. And we can put it in the show notes for them. www.joeychu.com Start over. www.joeychu.com And, um... My Instagram is underscore underscore. So double underscore Joey Chu. And you can find what's happening to my film on both of those things. That's all I have. Great. That'll be in the show notes. And before we wrap up, because we're going to land soon. Yep. I wanted we to have ask 14 you, minutes. We have 14 minutes? Yes. Oh my gosh, I love it. They, they haven't, haven't told us. us to put yeah, the tray they're tables probably away. thinking we're super important people yeah. in coach. Oh yeah. Which. You know, Which, not, yeah, we're not in first class now. <laughs> yeah. I joked and told her I was from first class and I came back here to sit with the coach people just to like... Yeah, and he played magic <laughs> earlier. We were just playing with cards and I had to ask. I wasn't even going to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. I wasn't going to talk to you. Yeah, I know. Because she, she was I'm a little sick. under the weather and I, I'm a little bit of a... What do they call those people? Hypo, hy, hypochondriac? Weaklings? <laughs> No. I was just thinking, I don't want to get sick from her. But she seemed nice because, you know, she Why? asked politely or something for to oh. get by or something. Oh. <laughs> I think I just said, I think I'm sitting over there. I think yeah. that's all I said. Okay. I don't know. Before we wrap. Yes. What, what one thing or one practice or one step can people listening take to further their career in the entertainment industry? Listen and learn how can they take that step what would they do what could they do today to get better at listening and learning I think one mistake that people make a lot and sometimes even I struggle with a lot is when you think you know what you're doing it makes you not want to hear other ways to do things you know what I mean so like always be open to like new ideas new ways of doing things so then you can always better yourself and find whatever you find the way that you would do best you know what i mean yes and so, also oh, yeah go and also just don't, don't be scared just be confident and do your thing and don't be scared of what other people will think i mean obviously but that's kind of cheesy but still true and that's a practice in itself yeah absolutely it's so easy to get intimidated you know especially in the film industry yeah. especially if you're young too 
and a girl. I mean. Oh yeah, I know you're killing it. That's great. Not so. Sure. So that <laughs> reminds me. Someone once said, "Be open to yourself being wrong with what you already know." There's something along those lines. Like yeah, so, pretend that makes maybe sense. what I know could be wrong. Let's just just right now, and then you're just taking a listen. Then you can hear it, and then you can decide a little later. There's a virtue, I guess, or like a saying in Japanese, and it's called, um, I mean, it doesn't really matter what it's called, but it's called the beginner's mind, <laughs> which means you should always be a beginner at anything you do. So even if you know, you think you know a lot about it, still try to have a beginner's mentality so you have the capacity to learn more. Because when you're an expert, you don't learn as much anymore. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Th- there was a great book called How to Think Like Einstein. Uh-huh. And they went all through that. Einstein, he he had so many accomplish accomplishments when he was younger and new to uh, physics and all yeah. that stuff. And then he got into this advanced stage, and there was a big, I guess it's called a lull, and he just couldn't come up with anything. And he, and he I think he wrote about it, and it was kind of depressing for him. But then he probably put on his beginner's thinking cap, and then he shot, uh, skyrocketed to some new findings. That's amazing. Yeah, that's a great book, guys. Wait, did Everyone he say that he did that? that? Yeah, that was part of the book with oh. some truths that I have to <laughs> believe. Oh. I mean, I didn't investigate the author. I believe on that everything. Book, but I believe everything I'm told. <laughs> I'm a believe listener. every single Wikipedia page. <laughs> oh, man, don't get me started. I used to not <laughs> be into Wikipedia, but now I've put in some trust and and I use it here and there. Yeah, I do. Along too. with other, I mean, I try to put it with other. But you use it at your own risk. Like, you decide what to believe and what not to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so. Definitely. That's some good advice. Everyone, including myself, we would all benefit from taking that step of sitting down and just asking yourself, can I be a beginner at this? And can I be open? And can I listen so I can learn? Yeah, exactly. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Joey. Yes. So, so much of a pleasure. Interviewing so, you. Pl- so much of a pleasure. Let me, let me, okay, I can't did even it say terrible. So much I'm, of a pleasure. I'm, I'm going to do that pleasure, again. Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. I'm going to do it again because I truly mean it. Okay. And then we both fumbled. Joey. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm, now I'm getting all excited. Like, oh my God. Joey, it's been a true pleasure spending time with you on the airplane and talking with you about all this wonder and magic in the film industry that you're in just like me it's been great i can't believe we talked for five hours straight it's a little intense but it's great (laughs) and now we're being told to put away everything so i will say goodbye to you and our listeners all right bye Bye. (laughs) that about does it i hope you enjoyed that airplane ride as much as we did it was a unique experience indeed if you had fun with this episode I would love to read what you liked or what you disliked, I guess. You can leave a review on iTunes or reach out to me on Instagram. I certainly have enjoyed these interviews more than I could ever have imagined, and I plan to continue learning and interviewing more guests to come because I can't wait to crack open more heads and share the goodies that await us inside. Until next time... (laughs) I wish you all a creative and interesting morning, afternoon, and night. Thank you for taking the time to listen. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to the Unfake It Till You Make It podcast. For detailed sources and show notes for this episode, visit www.unfakeittillyoumakeit.com. Until next time, get up, get going, and get creative.